walk backstage in a little bit. And I'd like to do, I'm sure these folks would like to, uh, like to stroll down memory lane. Uh, Larry, we'll start with you. You fought this gentleman. It lasted four rounds. Unfortunately, he put you down three times in the fourth round. What are your memories of that fight with Mike Tyson back in 1988? Well, what I remember is that Don King came knocking on my door <clears throat> about like nine o'clock at night. I had been tired for two years and I was out with my band singing. And it did not come on my door, bang, bang, bang. And it's Don King, ah, 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 ah. I said, come on in, man, what's up? He said, I want you to fight. I said, man, I'm retired, Don, for two years. You know that? He said, yeah, but I got to fight, man, for you, man. And I know you can beat this guy. I said, Don, I ain't going to fight. I'm not going to fight at all. I said, who you want me to fight anyway? He said, Mike Tyson. I said, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Tyson, yeah, Mike Tyson. I said, Don, I can't beat Mike Tyson. I've been off two years. He said, yeah, but I'm going to give you time to get in shape and everything. And you can whoop Mike Tyson. I said, no, I can't beat Mike Tyson. But he said, but I'm going to give you three and a half million dollars. I said, okay, where's my guy? <laughs> The rest is history, stopped in the fourth round, you know. And I had to run a match against Mike Tyson. I'm just glad he didn't hurt me. You know, he knocked me down a couple of times, but guess what? I didn't feel it. Because the first time he hit me, it didn't hit me so hard, I couldn't feel it. Like I, wanted, I, I got numb. Right? <laughs> well, Mike, what, what do you recall? Well, Mike, well, let me finish. Mike says to me, <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 I got to tell you, I got to tell you, it's interesting. Mike told me at the fight, he said, Larry, he said, I love you, man. Yeah, why you kick my ass like that? <laughs> <laughs> Mike is a great guy, ladies and gentlemen. He's a great guy. Yeah. What, what do you remember, Mike, of that fight? I just remember having a great opportunity to be in the ring with one of the greatest fighters of all times. And, um, that was just, um, you know, that's a milestone in my career. Um, you know, when you look at the situation, he's been off two and a half years. Um, he's pretty much robbed of his title. He probably pretty much gave up boxing, gave up the thought of fighting. He didn't have time to prepare properly. And um, that's just um, one of the, um, I don't know if it's a downstone, one of the milestones of being a great champion when you're, old, when you're older and you're, um, not at your peak, though. They always want you to fight the young, up-and-coming guy. And um, it happened to me. And that's just what happens in the game of boxing. They make room for the new guy. In order to make his star as bright as they can be, sure. you have to fight the old champion and stuff. I never thought that I fought the great Larry Holmes of his prime or anything. I never had no big, um, I was never delusional about that. I had no great, um, great um, Ron Yossi, and I fought the legendary Larry Holmes in his prime. I know it by all means I didn't, and um, I just appreciate the victory. Okay. Uh, Mike was 21 at the time, and Larry was 38, uh, so there's kind of a, a difference in age. Now, Larry, you had fought Ali when Ali was the aging icon, and you were the in his prime champion. And then the roles were reversed, and you became the aging guy in the fight this fellow who was getting into his prime. One when you were fighting Ali, you didn't want to hit him. Well, you know, one of the things about Ali and I, you know, Ali was 38 and I was 30 or whatever. 30. And um, I worked with him four years as a spot partner, so I knew everything he could do. And I knew that he couldn't beat me. <clears throat> Not only that I knew it, Ali knew that he couldn't beat me. But it was a money thing, and I mean, listen, I don't blame him. Like, like I said, with Mike Tyson, with Don King, off me three and a half million, where's Mike Tyson? The belt of Muhammad Ali, 10 million, where's Larry Holmes? And that's what it's all about, it was right. a lot of money. Thing. But see, so you, you had a hard time hitting your item. I'm going to ask you, did you have a hard time hitting this one? <laughs> I'm just, um, I'm fine, I'm just objective, you know what I mean? If it was my mother, I would hit her. <laughs> 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 I am. very objective about the ring. Uh, nothing personal. Right. Nothing personal at all. So when, when you didn't feel, again, on that night, that you were the young, you know, almost invincible guy at that point, and he was the aging guy, you didn't take, have any mercy on him? No, because um, 
If I had mercy on him, he might have kicked my ass. <laughs> Listen, because you know, but after I fought him, he fought, so he fought Holyfield, he fought uh, Oliver McCall, you know, he fought quite a few uh, the top guys, and he, and he almost beat him, and some guys thought he won those fights, you know what I mean? So, um, he didn't have enough time to prepare for the fight when he fought me. That's just the real, you know, he's being humble about the situation. He just didn't have enough. He should have fought twice or three times or something before the fight. But, you know, of course, you know, Don didn't get an opportunity to get more right. up and get prepared. And just as he had the few fights after he fought me, he fought Holderfield and he fought um, um, Tommy, um, what's the great Mercer, vicious puncher. You know, those, he really handled those guys pretty simple. Sure. Uh, you know what? I'm glad that Mike Tyson fought me that day and beat me that day. Because if he didn't beat me that day, I wouldn't have nothing to talk about. No, <laughs> uh, no, you got plenty to talk about. Silly. If you could fight anybody in history, you can even go down in weight class if you want. If you could fight anybody, any of the great fighters from the past, and Mike, you're going to get the same question too. Who would you, who would you have liked to have fought? Dempsey, you know. You know what? Joe I, I, I really never thought about it because I happen to be around Dempsey in his restaurant in New York. I happen to be around Joe Lewis, mm -hmm. you know. I've been around all them guys and I looked up to them. I mean, they were my idols, man. They would give me your autograph and I was going up there every day to get his autographs, you know. Just to say I was with Jack Dempsey and stuff like that and Joe Lewis. But I never really looked out outside of my picture and say I would fight Joe Lewis. Or I fought Muhammad Ali because they were not in there. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking about fighting and winning. I didn't get into boxing to fight and win the championship. I got into boxing to make some money. Mm -hmm. How about you, Mike? Could you? I'm thinking Jack Johnson. I'm thinking yeah, you want to play Jack Johnson. I just wanted to fight Sam, Sam as Mr. Holmes. I really admire the um, utmost of respect for those guys. I wanted to be in. Um, if, if anything, I wanted to be in the same category as those guys. I wanted to be mentioned in the same breath as those guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I always looked at them guys as, you know, my stepping stone of becoming great. You know, they were the yardstick of which I've, I've used in my success. It is, Larry, the highlight. What was the memorable fight in your career? What's the one that you say, that one I'll never forget for reasons A, B, and C? Kenny Norton. The reason why <clears throat> Kenny Norton was uh, one of my greatest moments is because so many people said I couldn't do it. They used to say my legs were too small, I couldn't punch. I'm just a copy of Muhammad Ali. I was not going to win against Kenny Norton. The odds started out against me, and they were, they were against me until the end of the fight. But, you know, with my hard work and dedication, and I guess asking God for the help as much as I did, he got tired of me asking for my help to give you what I want. That was the fight with Kenny Norton in the temporary championship of the world. Yeah, that, that was funny. funny. But that was, that was my, my goal, my dream, my... <laughs> you told me I couldn't do it, but I'm the champ. And I'm sure a lot of people told Mike the same thing, that he couldn't do it. He had to prove himself that he can do it. Mike, how about you? What's your fight that you recollect most? Buster Douglas. Buster Douglas? <laughs> yeah, I want to see. Because um, I needed that fight to make me a better person, to make me a better fighter, and um, to have a broader perspective of myself in the world that I live in. Hmm. You know, so much is being talked about in other sports about concussions. Is that a topic in boxing? Did you guys ever think about it, talk about it? Did you ever, I know you gave concussions, <laughs> but did you, do you think you ever received them? I'm sure I have, I'm sure I have. Um, but I just know, um, this is what I know. I just know when I signed that contract when I was 17, to be a professional fighter, I knew um, any time um, it was an unwritten clause in there that you could die during training or fighting, there's a possibility you could die. You know, it's not in there, but it's unwritten. And I knew that. I've seen it on television. I'm sure Mr. Holmes, we've seen people die. We've seen friends, we know, we've seen fighters, we saw the same gym die. We knew that can happen. We probably didn't think it happened, but we knew the possibility that can happen. Mm -hmm. How about you, Larry? You, the, well, even now, do you have after effects? Anything of boxing? I was crazy as hell before I got to the ring, you know? <laughs> I was so crazy. But no, I never thought like that. I never thought that it could happen to me in boxing. I never thought I would. Uh, you know, with concussion. Only, only time I got stopped is when Mike Tyson hit me. He's the only one that stopped me. So I never really been taking a whole lot of punches. Mm -hmm. um, my, my style of boxing is move here, move there, and don't get hit. You know, hit and don't be hit. But Mike was the only one that hit me. And he, he knocked me down. 
I got up. I thought I slept. I got up, hit me again, knocked me down. I got up again, and I said, I'm going to get him now. <laughs> he know he had knocked me down twice, so I'm going to wait till he come in, and I'm going to hit him with an uppercut. Well, my arm got caught in the room. Yeah, but I'm going to caught in the room. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I said? Oh, shit. <laughs> That's the only time, you know, that, that I've been, I, I mean, I, I got hit a couple times and then I went down, but not like when Mike Tyson hit me. Right. I got hit by Ernie Shavers, the hardest puncher that ever, I thought, hit anybody. I still got the knot right here, 40 years later. But uh, he was the only, second guy that only hit me like that. Oh, man, that was a, that was a great um, feat of courage when I watched that fight when he fought Ernie Shavers. Um, I was just amazed that he got up from that. I didn't believe it's like he got shot with a shotgun. That's right. And he fell. And, um, I was amazed myself. Yeah, that was <laughs> Yeah, that was really amazing. All right, now we've gathered here um, to celebrate your careers and, and to get a little, to have a little conversation with you. But we've also here, Mike, because of Iron Mike Productions. Yes. Uh, you've got your card true. here uh, Friday night here in Turning Stone. And that's sort of part and parcel of the uh, Hall of Fame ceremonies. So tell me a little bit about, you know, what we're going to see here Friday. And, uh, you know, who's, who should we be looking at? Who's well, the guy, who's the next Tyson out there? Well, you know, um, there's a young kid that, um, that lives in Pittsburgh named Sammy Vasquez. You know, the sensational Sammy Vasquez. He's a sensational fighter. Um, he's also a, a, a rock um, a war veteran. And he's been very successful in the fight. We had two fights. We promoted two of his fight, which was sensational. When um, Bethlehem got knocked down in the first round, knocked really, really got really bashed. He got up a little too quick, uh, for my opinion. But he went into the guy. Three rounds later, the guy was, you know, he was just, I mean, he was camped out on the floor. And um, that shows a great deal of perseverance. perseverance. And um, I love the style. He's very aggressive. Then we also. Um, had another fight in his hometown of Pittsburgh, which was sensational. He had a sensational one-round slaughter against another undefeated fighter. And um, that's what I was saying. I ain't Mike Productions. We had, um, this is our third fight, I believe, ESPN. No, second on ESPN, and, this, uh, um, and we had one on Showbox. And um, gratefully, at all those shows, they always, um, they either tied and broke the record for viewers on the television program. That's why um, we're very grateful to have them um, show our fights again. Now, Larry, he's gone from boxing to promoter. I know you've got a lot of business interests yourself, but what is it that, uh, that's on your kind of business bucket list? What would you like to do? Well, you know, I don't know what I want to do now since I've gotten old. <laughs> but what I did do, I did some promoting in boxing. I promoted my eight shows back in the 70s, I mean, 80s and 90s. I promoted while I was fighting. Mm -hmm. and. I like it, but a lot of times I didn't like the fighters or the managers, the trainers, because if you want, if you want to talk about Don King, don't That is it. interesting, right? They're, the they're all Don King, you know? They're all of them. Right. So I, I, I just gave it up and said, I quit. And the same thing I just did here with my gym, I had a gym training fighters, training right. fighters. But instead of them coming and paying the dues, they wanted me to get them the money for coming in. Sure. So, you know, eight, nine, ten years of giving them everything they want, I just say, say I'm fed up, I want to give me something, not me and my family something. Right. So I, I got out of boxing, but I'm still a part of that because I've been the commentator for a cable company, Service Electric. I work for them, I've been doing the work for them for about eight, nine years. And like we had, we promoted one of my Tyson shows on national TV, not national TV, uh, local TV, mm -hmm. while he was in uh, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. And we hope that Mike brings another show that fun does the thing so that we can uh, promote that also. Well, there you go. You're looking forward to it. Hey, forward. now I know Easton is close enough to us, but this guy is really sort of closer yet. He fought in Albany four times as a pro, Latham twice as a pro, Troy once as a pro, Glens Falls once as a pro, and... I fought twice in Glens Falls. Twice in Glens Falls? I'm sorry. Frazier and uh, Jesse Ferguson. Okay, oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, and also you're in Syracuse, right down the road in the Empire State Camp. So you're kind of a upstate guy, central New York guy. Any allure f still in your heart, in your soul for this area? Are you 100%. Yeah. No doubt about it. Um, listen, um, 
I can't wait the day the night to find out my friends that we went to school with are gonna come visit. You know, they're police officers and they're all in law enforcement, but they're gonna come and uh, they normally travel wherever I have fights at too. And so we're gonna see my teachers, I'm gonna see people, um, my old girlfriends, all the high school, kids, <laughs> uh, everybody's Mike, coming. I met your wife today. Uh, yeah, she's beautiful, she's quiet. quiet. <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> she's gonna meet him too. <laughs> So Larry, you don't often get up here, but you're here now, and your attraction is what? Why, why did you come well, up? Well, I come up here because I'm Hall of Fame, and I used to come up because I like to gamble. But gambling <laughs> taught me a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> I refuse to answer any more questions. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we're going to get to the, some, some of these perfunctory questions that uh, have to be asked. Uh, your favorite boxing movie. Larry, and I, we, I have to ask you a, a specific question about a movie I just read. My about. favorite boxing movie, even though I don't like the guy that played it, which was Rocky, but the very first Rocky movie that they played, that's the one I like. It was half black and white, half color, and it, more realness than all this late stuff and phoniness. Uh -huh. So that's the one I like, and I don't remember the name of it because it was so long ago. But Rocky, I watched him, I liked it, I liked him, and. Uh, how about you, Mike? Raging Bull. Raging Bull. Yeah. Now, the same guy who just said he likes Raging Bull, the same guy who's you know, the, the baddest man on the planet, if any of you looked at Us Weekly a couple of issues ago, there was a list of uh, 25 things that you, we don't know about Mike Tyson. And one of them was that every time he's watched the movie The Notebook, he says, what do you do? Well, unless, of course, it's sentimental. You cry. You cry. You cry. You cry. You cry. The toughest guy in the world is just looking at that from a human perspective. You cry. My. No, you cry. Well, I don't cry when tears come down my eyes, OK? <laughs> <laughs> I don't cry easy when tears come down my eyes. If I was watching a movie with you, you start crying. I'd probably start crying, too. <laughs> now, what's the scene in the notebook that really crushes you? Um, you know, just that, um, hit, I forget that. Forget that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Larry, what, what movie makes you cry, Larry? <laughs> I'm going to tell you what, man. I, I don't cry when I come watch movies, but I watch gangster movies. Uh, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a guy that sleeps with my TV on. My wife gets mad at me. I know she does, but she puts up on me. And I watch cowboy movies. I watch gangster movies. And I watch whatever game show movies they're on TV. And I'm I fall asleep. When I wake up, if the game show on, I'm happy. Right. If a cowboy movie on, I'm happy. <laughs> Mike, if you weren't a boxer, and you, but you were a professional athlete, but not a boxer, what sport would you have played? I would never want to be anything but a fighter. That's really? all I ever wanted to be. Just a fighter? That's all I ever wanted to so be. So when you had your football game, you don't imagine being a no, linebacker or something? No, I never wanted to be a fighter. I never wanted to be anything else. Really? Never. Never. How about you, Larry? If you were to be two something? things I wanted to be. I wanted to be a fighter and I wanted to be a, a running back for the Dallas Cowboys. I wanted to put Tony Dorsett out of business. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you know, and I tell Tony that when I say him, I said, man, you know you're lucky I dropped out of school and they go to college. Because I knew I could outrun you. Because he's only kind of about he's smaller than he's about five eight, I think he is. Like, real fast. You know, real fast, you know what I mean? And that's what he told me, the lever, I would run some smoke group, put smoke around you, you can't get it. But that's what I want to do, I want to play football and I want to box. Yeah. What's the sports event that you haven't been to that you'd like to go to? <laughs> well, I played basketball. I was athletic in class, I did everything, you know? But when I dropped out of school, that stopped a lot of the things that I was doing with the young people that I was growing up with. Right. So boxing, I didn't need to know how to throw a left or a right. You know? I mean, I didn't, I didn't need to know how to read or write. Right. I need to know how to throw a left and a right. right. <laughs> That's what I learned. So right. uh, without education, I knew how to fight. You know, and that what took me yeah. to a position. I'm in. Larry, if I correct me if I'm wrong, you're you're one of twelve children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, tough upbringing and whatnot. And so because of that, he had to drop out in the seventh grade and go to work and help support the family. But let them know that I got a PhD in common sense. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mike, if, 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 if what sporting event would you like to attend that you haven't attended? Would you like to go to a Super Bowl, Wimbledon? What, 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 what's that your sports bucket list? Hey, um, 
I'm, this is this very, I've never been a sports fan. I don't ever watch sports now. Really? I just only wanted to do be a fighter my whole life. Really? That's all I ever wanted to do. So if I ask you who's going to win the Stanley Cup, you, you couldn't tell me? Well, listen, um, if it's not the Red Wings, you know, because I know people are the Red Wings, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> it's the New York Rangers and the LA Kings, so you got to be from the Rangers. No, I'm not from nobody. Really? Not, you know, if I don't know the guys on the team, and stuff, you know, I want, I'm just a fighter. That's all I wanted to do is fight. That's all I ever wanted to do is be a boxer. Yeah. Larry, how about you? You uh, got a pick for the Stanley Cup or the NBA Finals? No, I don't watch that. Really? No, I don't, I don't watch the soccer. <laughs> <laughs> well, the NBA... I want to watch a good fight like Mike Tyson and Jerry Coney or Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier like I did last night. Yeah. I'm crazy. Yeah, I'm crazy. So we have we have a we have a television host there, we have a, a, a one man show here, but they both now this fellow used to sing in a group called Marmalade, and, and quite the singer, still does still does. This fellow, as we all know, is quite the singer from uh, The Hangover. I suck at the singer. You pay to hear me sing, but I suck. I talk before they even give me the check. I suck. <laughs> I do. So, so the question is, we know what happened when you guys got together in the ring. What would happen if you got together in a karaoke bar? Who would win that? I'm ready, I'm ready to do a song with Mike now. I think yeah. we should make it. No, I think that's great. I know you want to leave me, but I refuse to let you go. If I had to beg and plead for your sympathy, I don't mind. Money. <laughs> money. Money. I, hope. Uh, I got some issues with my life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woo! I think you won. I think you I think Mike Tyson wins again. It's a draw. That's a draw. Oh, it's a draw. It's a draw. If you say it's a draw, it's a draw. Okay. Question for uh, Iron Mike. Iron Mike, are you going to act? Any more with the, the serious? Because we saw you with, I forgot what his name was, but you were in a movie. It was before um, Hangover. With it. I can't think of the guy. It was guy. Robert Downey. Yes, yes. And you were great in it. You were great in it. And I don't think people really get to see that side of you too much. Because it was, that was the best part of the movie. Hey, thank you very much. You know, um, I'm doing more acting. And I like comedy. I like comedy because my whole life has been really serious, you know. <laughs> people got a little creepy. Uh, um, so I want people to loosen up about me, so I like to keep them laughing, you know. Hey, Larry, I, I just want to tell you something. I'm right over here. Let's go over this way. Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I got the same last name you got, and um, i like to take your hand. I've been looking to see you for a long time. What? Well, I'd like to shake your hands. I'm right over here. Right? Goes right over just walk over here, shake my hand. Stop. You're bossy, dude. <laughs> Come on. Don't, don't, don't fall down. Get the hug, too. <laughs> yes, sir. This year, uh, Joe Calzaghe's getting into the Hall of Fame, and there's a really good documentary about him called No Average Joe. There's a moment in it when Chris Eubank and Nigel Benn uh, see each other uh, now after having you know, fought each other, and they both remark about how they made each other great, um, and just that importance of a rival. I was wondering, who do you guys think of as your rivals um, and do you agree that it's rivals that make great fighters? Thanks. 
I don't know, I don't believe in rivalry. You know, that's just a word that people made to make them sell more tickets. Um, it's just too competitive. And um, fighters bring, the best fighters bring out the best of each other. The most competitive fighters, I believe, bring out the best of each other. You know, in, in all fights, you know, because I, and uh, right before a fight, I'm always nervous and think I'm going to lose, you know. And I guess the, the thought of me losing helps me rise to the occasion. That's what I like to believe. Larry, how about you? you, you well, let me, let me uh, say this. I was, first, I want to thank Turning Stone for having me here and bring me again close to my friend, Mike Tyson. And not only that, bring me close to you guys out here, and I appreciate the question. That's what you're asking. You know, but in fighting, it's kind of hard to fight somebody that you like, you love, or whatever, and um, you don't want to do any damage to them, but you know you've got a job to do is you want to take that next step, so you go out there and do the best you can. All right, about this is addressed to both of you men. Uh, who is the well-known boxer from the 80s? whose only losses as a professional were to each of you. And yet he speaks glowingly of both of you in his latest book, which is his book of his biography. Well, what's the name of his book? <laughs> <laughs> That's going to make it easy for you. It's called Meet Marvis Frazier. Oh, wow. Marvis Frazier is an awesome guy. He's a really awesome guy. Really awesome guy. I, I knew Marvis ever since he was a little kid, because I used to work. Because his father is a sparring partner, because, you know, coming up back then, that's what you had to do to get into get into boxing. You want to learn from the best, and I was working with Joe Frazier. Got me to meet Marvis and Jackie and the whole family. And uh, it was not fun fighting Marvis, because you look at him when he was a kid, and then you get certain you got to knock him out. And it's something hard to do. And uh, that's why I called the referee to stop him, but it. Marvis is a great guy, he's doing well, he's in Washington, and uh, every now and then we hear from him. If you uh, have a moment afterwards, I'd like to present you with a copy of this book to each of you. Send you awesome. I'm sure we'll have a, I'll have a moment, please. <laughs> hey, how you doing, guys? My question was one for Mike there. Uh, when you fought on uh, the, the match with uh, Mr. Holmes here in the training back in um, Catskill, Cuss used to tell you that um, if you were able to time him with the right hand, you could catch him. So when you had that first knockdown and you hit him with that right, were you thinking about that before you hit that right, that he had his left hand low and you could catch him with that right hand and remember Cuss' words? Not actually, I was just fighting. <laughs> you know, just, and fight, fighting um, is about being in the moment. You know, it's about always being in the moment. It's almost, it's almost about being animalistic because the only reason why animals are so successful is because they think of the moment. They don't have nothing that they think of. They have no, no memories of the past and nostalgic memories. They think of the moment. Everything is in the moment when you're fighting. Tenth of a second timing. Um, this is hard to believe. Because when you think of a second, a second is nothing. But a second is too slow for boxing. Yeah. And, and if you mess with a dog, it might get dead. Yeah, it's all about tenth of a second, time and thinking. A second, I, you know, when I, as I got older in life, I realized, wow, a second is too slow to be a fighter. You're going to miss the opportunity. Hi, Mike. Hello. Thank you very much for being here. This is so exciting. My son-in-law is going to be so jealous. Um, I wanted to ask you, is any of your children interested in boxing? You know, my children are interesting. Um, I, I come, we're in an entitlement era now where kids are entitled to stuff, you know. My kids don't know what it's like to be um, living in an abandoned building. They don't know what it's like not to eat for a couple of days. They, they don't have the guts for this kind of stuff, you know. You really have to have the guts for this stuff, you know. Not even, not even you have to be a successful fighter. You have to be the guts. You have to have the guts just to be step in the ring, you know. They've been, they've been sheltered most of their life. They go to private schools and have a bunch of little white bitch friends they hang out with. And, uh, they ain't gonna do this stuff, you know. They think they're too, I have a 16 year old son that think he's a tough guy, but he ain't gonna do this stuff. You know, they wanna pick on people smaller than them and stuff. They don't wanna <laughs> confront this world. What, what, what you feel the future of boxing is, and particularly what is it relative to the rise of mixed martial arts and all of that stuff? <clears throat> 
You want to go first, man? Well, me and Mike Tyson can knock both of them off the auto martial art guy down. <laughs> Some of them guys are really tough, Larry. <laughs> Listen, you know, man, if you hit them like you hit me, you ain't got no problem. <laughs> you know, boxing is totally different from guys like um, when me and Larry were fighting. Um, a guy, you know, listen, Larry might have fought five times in one year. Listen, a guy, um, a guy now, the best fighter in the world, Floyd Patterson, right? Floyd Mayweather, excuse me. Floyd Mayweather, um, fight once a year. For once a year, but still he makes the highest price, he breaks the record on the financial, on the, on the grosses, and the money, and the purse. You know, so that shows that boxing is still alive. But collectively, boxing is not alive. But it would be if it had an American heavyweight that was knocking out guys and constantly winning. Right down here in front of the podcast. I like how they're in What's the one punch that you remember the most of your whole career? Well, the punch I remember the most, I didn't see it coming. <laughs> I don't know which one was the left or right. Larry, how about you? What's the punch you remember? I got hit by Mike Tyson. Thank you, my Larry. I have a question for Larry. Larry, I'm sure there are others here who were privileged as I was to be in attendance at Conestoga the day you were inducted into the Boxing Hall of Fame, 2008 or 2009, you would remember the year better than I do. My question for you about that event, Larry, you gave that day, for me, the highlight speech of all the people on the days that day, and it was such a brilliant speech, I have always wanted to hear that speech again. I'm wondering, on the internet or wherever, if there is a recording of that speech, and if there is any way we can access that speech, because that was one of the most inspirational speeches yeah. I have ever heard in my life, Larry Holmes. God bless you for that. I really appreciate it. All right, I want to hear it again. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Larry Holmes. I'm the former heavyweight boxing champion of the world. My record speaks for itself. 76 fights with only 69 losses, and I didn't lose them all. I don't care what they say. <laughs> <laughs> but that was a beautiful day. We had a lot of time. I was up, uh, you know, time to, I was inducted into the Hall of Fame, and I even shed a tear or two after the, the event, you know, because I was so happy. Because so many people in the boxing world said that I would never be nothing. I'm just a copy of Muhammad Ali. My legs are too small. I couldn't punch. But here I am now, standing in front of thousands of people, being inducted into the World Boxing Hall of Fame as one of the great fighters of all time. That had to be something that I never dreamed that I would be. The thrill that I never, a feeling that I never thought that I would ever, ever have. And um, I was just happy that I was being honored that day. And anybody who already inducted into the Hall of Fame, any Hall of Fame, they should be excited about it. All right, Larry, I think the move you're talking about is someone up there likes me. Is that the one that you're referencing? No, he's oh, yeah. there, Rocky. That's, yeah. Oh, okay, well, oh, Rocky Graziano. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, right. Yeah, no, no, no. Black and white. Yeah, he's right. And like 1986, I started out as a flight attendant with TWA, which no longer. I saw you, Times Square, New Year's Eve, with a couple of your, your buddies. So you're talking 28 years ago hanging out like the, the other uh, person said, you were playing cards, but you were just like a regular guy, just walking around Times Square, it was around seven o'clock in the evening, and just very interesting to see you and just say, hanging out with, with just the regular people. Well, I think I'm a regular guy, but I guess other people make me irregular. <laughs> I believe I'm regular. The cameras come out, the kids even have to come irregular. All right, this is to you. I just want to tell you that you know, I know you didn't get the recognition that you deserved, but you were a hell of a fighter and one of the greatest I've ever seen. And Mike, I remember when I was growing up, I'm about your age, and I lived in Brooklyn, and me and my friends chipped in to watch one of your fights. And just as you started, you came out, one of my friends went to the bathroom. By the time he came back, the fight was over. <laughs> but he still had to pay up his dues. But you two guys brought us a lot of excitement. I just want to say thank you. Yeah, that's the thing that's the most of life. You gotta pay your dues. You gotta pay your dues. 
you're from the great American heavyweight. You're one of the last great American heavyweights. So my question is, what is your take on Deontay Wilder? He's 31 wins, 31 knockouts, untested. Hasn't had that significant, that significant, that very significant win. I was saying, do you think that he can take the American heavyweight to the next level, no. bring back those years that you guys implemented? You know who he's talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you knew. I didn't know what he was talking about. I thought probably you might know too. No, I don't, I don't know. I don't know the guy, but let me, let me just say this to you. If he's got that many wins, he's that determined to win all those fights, he's got to be more, he's got to be determined to win the heavyweight championship of the world. Because, I mean, it ain't really nothing out there that I see that is. I want to take a look at it. I want to turn the TV on. You think you got the boys over there in uh, Germany and Russia, wherever they're from, that won't come here to fight. So, you know, more power to him. I just hope he just keep doing what he's doing and wish him the best. My name's Anthony. I just want to say thank you to both of you for being here. Uh, Mike, I'm a huge fan of yours. Thank you, Anthony. And uh, actually, I played college soccer about 10, 12 years ago, and I used to watch your highlights before I would go, you know, play soccer. So your highlights would pump me up to play soccer. And, uh, <laughs> but they didn't kick anybody. <laughs> <laughs> you, you actually did an interview, or uh, I guess you'd call an interview with my uh, favorite soccer player, Diego Maradona, that, uh, you know, I watched on YouTube. So I, I just wanted to thank you again for all the highlights and uh, inspiration. Have you met Diego before? No, no. Oh, he's an awesome guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, my question was for Mike Tyson. Uh, I was yes. wondering what got you into promoting boxing instead of actually being a boxer. And I was wondering if uh, you were going to do Hangover 3 too. <laughs> well, I, well, we didn't do Hangover 3 yet. Okay. No, not yet. I was wondering if it's in process. No, well, I have no idea. You know, I'm the kind of guy, call me, have check, we'll act. Okay? <laughs> and, um, I was actually wondering if Mayweather had influence on you being a promoter. Not at all, not at all. Um, I never anticipated being a promoter, but then I had my partner, Gary Jonas, um, who had, like I was explaining earlier, he had a stable of fighters that weren't going anywhere, and they, so he decided, he, he gave me an offer that I couldn't refuse and stuff, so I had bills to pay, and a bunch of kids, and so um, I decided to get involved with it. Once I got involved, um, I saw it's really an opportunity I may be able to help some people, regardless of fighting, but from a human perspective in life. And so and that um that lit my interest more than anything. You know, because you're only gonna be a fighter an athlete for a certain increment of time, but you're gonna be a, a person for so much longer period of time. And I always found out, in my experience only, that all great people are not good people. And probably um I can help somebody become a good person. I was fortunate enough, um, more so than most of you, I was, I was backstage with these guys for a little while before we came out. And I don't have a question, but I do have a statement. And, and these two guys, you know, they're big, tough, rough guys. That's how we know them. And yet, when you are backstage, and I'm the lucky one, I was back there, I saw them in a way that we never saw them, obviously, in the ring. He's a genuine, nice gentleman who may go out of their way to greet people who are not, you know, they say, what do they say, that the, the mark of a man is how he treats a person who can't help him. And these two guys have it in them to be genuine to people who are no, quote unquote, used to. So I gotta tell you that uh, what you saw up here, I heard, I heard a lot of you say thank you for being here. It's an honor to be in your presence. Uh, you know, those are well-placed words. These are, these are two pretty good guys, and you should know that. How about a big round of applause for I want to thank you. 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 I want to thank you.